So a lot of these things should be understood in terms of the central dogma, which says that DNA is converted into RNA, which is converted into proteins, and we've added that DNA can replicate itself. Within this discussion, there are a lot of different types of RNA that we'll be referring to, and I think if we go over an overview of that, then we'll have a really good understanding of the main players that fit into different places within the central dogma of converting DNA into proteins. So the first type that we'll deal with is something known as HNRNA, which stands for homogeneous nuclear RNA. And what that is, is it's the first RNA that is transcribed when you go from DNA into a ribosome into an RNA transcript. And this is also referred to, perhaps even more commonly, as pre-mRNA. And what it is, it's the primary transcript. It's the first thing that is transcribed when you undergo transcription. And it is a long thing that contains both introns and exons and other components. It has not yet been capped and processed, but it is the long pre-mRNA that is produced during the first round as you transcribe something in the nucleus. Remember that because DNA is confined to the nucleus, the transcription process happens in the nucleus. And just as a little mnemonic device, if you're trying to remember transcription versus translation, just remember that transcription happens before translation because translation has the word late in it. So translation occurs later, and that's a good way to kind of get those ideas sorted out in terms of their positions in this process as we move through the central dogma. So the HNRNA, the homogeneous nuclear RNA, or pre-mRNA, is the primary transcript that is made. Then that will most likely encounter SNRNA, which is small nuclear RNA, and that becomes part of the splicing mechanism, the spliceosome that helps process the pre-mRNA and turn it into just mRNA. And the spliceosome, what it does is it essentially connects to the exon parts and splices out the introns, so it removes the ones that will not be converted into protein. And so snRNA is part of that spliceosome, and an interesting feature of this is that it is an enzyme, it, it catalyzes a reaction, and it's one of the few times that you'll see an enzyme that is not a protein. So the snRNA, the small nuclear RNA, is part of what uh, is one of the few times that you'll ever see a non-protein enzyme in human physiology. Once the spliceosome has spliced out the introns and left the exons, there's an additional part of processing where they provide a five prime cap and a poly A tail on the three prime end, which we'll go over in another video. But essentially the, the transcript, the pre-mRNA or the primary transcript is going to be processed by removing the introns and capping it and putting on a poly A tail. And by that point, it becomes mRNA. mRNA is messenger RNA, and it consists of all of the base pairs that are going to be converted into proteins. And the other interesting thing is that the mRNA is still quite a long structure, and it is capable, because of its cap and its tail, it's capable of leaving the nucleus and entering the cytoplasm, where now it can interact with ribosomes and help form proteins. And so by the time you have a completely processed and capped mRNA that has had its introns removed, a cap and a poly A tail put on it, now it's ready to move out into the cytoplasm and participate in the translation process, which involves taking your RNA and converting that into a protein structure. The two steps in the translation process that involve RNA are, one of them is transfer RNA, tRNA. And what that is, is it's a fairly small RNA, usually around 75, 76 base pairs, that links a, a, a particular amino acid to a codon in the genetic code. And so that is essential in helping you read the instructions provided by the mRNA and linking that to a particular 
amino acid. And so then you can build a polypeptide based on the genetic information that is encoded in your mRNA, which was produced during the transcription process. And now it's being translated into proteins. And the last type of RNA to be very familiar with is rRNA, ribosomal RNA. And this is the RNA that forms the ribosome, which is the structure where translation occurs. Essentially, the mRNA enters the ribosome, and then the tRNA helps, helps change that genetic code into a series of amino acids that becomes a protein. And so once you have this list down, then we're ready to launch into a complete discussion of the entire central dogma, going through all of the enzymes and components involved in transcription. And then once we have this mRNA transcript, then we're ready to turn that into proteins and use our DNA, our genetic information, for its intended purpose of producing proteins that are useful physiologically.